Hey, welcome into another episode of the Fat Guy Podcast. I am the Fat Guy. Most people just call me Brett Mason. I answer to a lot of names, though, so just try to make them nice. When you talk about me, just use nice names. Appreciate you tuning in today, whether you are already pursuing a ketogenic diet, low-carb diet, uh, maybe you're just interested in it, uh, maybe you're looking for answers to specific questions. Um, what I've found is I try to answer the things that have come up in my journey, and I assume they'll come up in other people's journey, and so hopefully it'll help. A quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor, not a trained medical professional, and while I have spent literally hundreds and hundreds of hours researching diet, nutrition, and health over the past five years, you shouldn't uh, take anything I say as official medical or dietary weight loss advice. You should consult a doctor for that. Um, everything I'm sharing with you is, per- is my personal opinion and my personal experience is only nothing else, nothing more. Nothing I say is specific weight loss or dietary or health advice for you. With all that being said, uh, I do my best to uh, help people the best I can and I have helped a lot of people get healthier and lose weight. And it is, I really am down to one passion in life and that's it. And uh, this podcast is a part of it, so uh, thanks for listening today. So big question I get from very early on. I find when most people start a ketogenic diet, the first thing they do is buy those keto sticks, the little things you pee on to see if you have ketones in your urine. And um, I tell people those things are useless. You really don't need them. Um, And they're really only going to, you know, what little use they do have is only going to be good for the first little while. So think of it this way. When you uh, start going low-carb, high-fat, trying to get ketogenic, and your body runs out of, uh, you know, glucose to burn as fuel, and it starts trying to figure out what to do, (laughs) it really freaks out because while your body's really good at burning ketones for fuel, it doesn't need carbs or sugar or glucose or any of that. Um, Once you, you know, you've been living on that your entire life, your body has to adapt. And so there is an adaptation phase and things get weird. And so one of the first things that happen is you pee a lot. You just pee a lot because once the carbs are out, once you don't have that stored glycogen, and it takes almost four grams of water for every one gram of glycogen store. So everywhere you have a gram of glycogen, your body's going to keep about four grams of water. So it's four to one. Uh, once you get to all that glycogen out, you don't need it anymore. The body doesn't need that water anymore. It doesn't need it to suspend the glycogen store. So it just lets it go. And when it lets it go, you use a, lose a lot of electrolytes. And this is where keto flu comes from. So you're going to pee a lot. I tell people, you want to know if you're on track? You should be peeing a lot. <laughs> you should be peeing. If you're a really high sugar eater, like you eat a ton of sugar and a ton of carbs... You, you know, you may go two days where you literally pee every one to two to three hours. Um, if you're a person that was more healthy, you know, you didn't eat quite as many carbs, you know, it, may, it won't be quite that dramatic, but you'll definitely be peeing more than you normally did. Um, you'll notice around day four or something, day three, day four, day five, that you become less hungry. Hunger isn't really a driving factor anymore. Cravings start to diminish. These are all things that will let you know that your ketone levels are rising and that you're doing the right thing. You don't need to pee on a stick for that. A lot of people buy the sticks, though, because it gives them a little bit of comfort. So the problem with the sticks is, is like, you're peeing out a lot of ketones. That's why they show up on the the pee sticks, because you're peeing out a lot of ketones. And that happens relatively easily early on, because your body isn't used to using ketones for fuel. And so it's kind of a wasting thing. Like you still have a lot of processes that are looking for carbs, wishing there was carbs. You know, the process hasn't completely converted over yet. And so while your body is now by design producing all these ketones, your body may not be using them that efficiently. So you're peeing a lot of them out. So it's going to show up on a stick. But the longer you're on a keto diet, the longer you're in a state of ketosis and the longer you're, you're doing this, your body becomes better and better and better and better adapted using the ketones for fuel. So you pee less of them out. So less of them show up on a stick. Now, there is an accurate way to check your ketones and it's with a blood test, but this is very expensive. 
Now, I have a ketone meter that checks ketones, and it also checks your blood sugar, and it's, and it's called Keto Mojo. And the reason I got that is because the ketone strips are the cheapest you'll find. It's a dollar a strip. So every time you want to check your ketone levels, it costs you a dollar. Compare that to a standard you know, blood glucose strip, you can get those as cheap as 10, 15 cents each. So it costs you 10, 15 cents to check your blood sugar. It's going to cost you a dollar to check your blood ketones. Now, that's the cheap one, and that's a relatively new device, and it is relatively uh, accurate. It's it's actually very accurate. I love the device. Keto Mojo is the name if you want to buy one, whatever. Um, The ones that have been around forever, like the Precision Extra, and there's uh, another one I can't think of the name of right now. Those ketone strips cost like $4. So before Keto Mojo came out, which has been within the last year, you had to buy a Precision Extra or, or a device like that, and it would cost you $4 just to check your ketones one time. Now, imagine if you only did that once a day. You know, you'd be spending like $120 a month just to check your ketones once a day. So it's very cost prohibitive. It just makes no sense, especially when it doesn't matter. So the question about ketones, you know, do I need my ketone levels high? What do I need to test? What do I need to check? Here's what I would tell you. Uh, I don't think you need to check anything, really. You just need to follow the rules. You just need to follow the proper diet. If you do it correctly, everything will work out. There's no need to check anything. However, I'm a person that loves to check things. I love to track things. I have a couple trackers on my phone, and I've gone through periods of three and four months where I would track like up to ten markers, blood pressure, uh, heart rate, uh, blood sugar, ketone levels, um, You know, sitting heart rate, standing heart rate, the difference between the sitting and standing heart rate. I mean, all these different things that I I think are reasonable indicators of health. My weight, of course, body fat percentage, uh, water percentage, bone weight percentage, muscle mass. You know, I track all these things and I do it every day for months. So, look, I understand. I'm a person that likes to track. But it's not necessary. It just uh, is interesting. It can give you some detailed insights. So if you're a stats nerd, a numbers nerd like me, you know, maybe you want to track these things and there's nothing wrong with it. My point is in this podcast is you don't have to do that. But if you wanted to track just one thing, the one thing that, ha- that shows the best health outcomes It's the cheapest thing to track, and it's your blood sugar. You can literally go down to Walmart or Walgreens, and you can get a, uh, you know, a pretty decent blood sugar checker for, you know, twenty-five, thirty dollars that uses really cheap test strips that are, you know, fifteen, twenty cents each, and you can check your blood sugar twice a day for almost nothing. Your blood sugar is going to be the best indicator of how healthy you are. And you want it to be down. So if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, which a lot of people interested in a ketogenic diet are, because you don't want to take the insulin and you don't want to take the metformin and you don't want to die from heart disease that comes from elevated insulin and elevated blood sugars and elevated inflammation and all this stuff that happens as a result of eating the standard American diet. Well, uh, blood sugar is is the absolute best way to know what's going on. Um, If your blood sugar stays low and in a safe range a lot, that means your insulin is probably staying in a low, safe range a lot. If your blood sugar is going up high a lot or staying high a lot, then you know your your body's putting out a ton of insulin. So it's staying high or going up high a lot. So checking blood sugar is a really easy way to keep tabs on what's going on with you internally and know how, how close you're getting to your health goals as you go along. So, you know, what's a healthy blood sugar? Well, you know, they say uh, anything less than 100 is di- is, uh, n- is not diabetic, right? Uh, between 100 and 125, I think, is pre-diabetic. And 126 and higher is, is type 2 diabetic. And that's a fasted blood sugar. So that would be after you've not eaten anything all night and, you know, you check your blood sugar at 9 or 10 the next morning. Um. Interestingly enough, fasting blood sugar is the worst one to check. Uh, You can check it, um, but depending on when you check it, there's something called the dawning effect. So your body, when your internal clock senses that it's time to get up, um, you know, about an hour or two before your body thinks you're going to get up or knows you're going to get up, it starts uh, creating some glucose 
through a, a process called uh, uh, gluconeogenesis. And it starts releasing it, getting you prepared for the day. So when you wake up in the morning, your blood sugar may actually be a little bit high, even though you haven't eaten anything in, you know, however many hours. Nevertheless, it's a fine metric to track. You can track it. Um, the most important thing to track is is uh, an hour after you eat and two hours after you eat. You know, if you really want to know what's going on with you, you want to know how healthy you are, you want to know how well you're doing in terms of what you put inside you and is your body becoming more and more insulin sensitive, which it should over time, if you stay on a, on a good, healthy ketogenic diet, that's what you need to check. So that's the number one thing I would say. Get you a, a reliable but, but cost-effective uh, blood glucose meter that has cheap strips and check into that because some of them have really expensive. I, thought, I bought something called an AccuCheck that automatically sends the information over to your phone to an app because I thought that would be cool. And the meter wasn't that expensive, but the strips are way expensive. And um, so expensive, to, in fact, that I just quit using that meter and went and bought a different one. I still have that meter, and it's a nice meter. I just don't use it because the strips are expensive. I went and bought a new one, an, another cheap one, a, a Contour, I think, is what I bought from Walmart. Um, I don't use that anymore now because I use the... Uh, the keto mojo because it does blood sugar and ketones so i can test either or both or whatever but what you want to do is after you eat well you actually want to do a couple things you want to check it before you eat check your blood sugar before you eat then eat then check it an hour later and then check it two hours later you want to see how high it goes at the hour mark and you want to see what happens at two has it come back down all the way or has it come down quite a bit or is it still high you know, if your blood sugar is, let's say your blood sugar is 90 before you eat, and after you eat, it gets up to 120, that's a pretty significant rise. It's not a dangerous rise. It's not considered a diabetic rise, but it's it's a pretty significant rise. Still, that doesn't matter all that much Is it if when you check it at, at the two-hour mark, let's say it's back down to 100, so you're almost back down to where you started. I mean, that's a good, that's a pretty good response. You know, if you check it, if you if you if you do pre-eating, it's ninety, and then you eat, and then an hour later, let's say it's one hundred and twenty, and then at two hours later, it's one hundred and thirty. Well, you got problems, and you the problems is something you're gonna have to figure out. Was it because you ate something bad? You know, eat too many carbs, or was it a nice ketogenic friendly, low carb, high fat meal, and your body just isn't doing its job well and, and that's fine most people that are really overweight and have been overweight for a long time you have insulin resistance and so this is how you're going to start out it's just not going to look good but the longer you go the better it'll get me personally when i feel my best and my healthiest and i know that i've been on a sustained healthy near perfect ketogenic diet for a long period of time you know my pre-meal blood sugars will be in the 70s, sometimes even in the upper 60s, but it'll be really low, really low. Uh, to the point, I think even some doctors would go, oh, that's too low. You don't want blood sugar in the 60s. Um, but, you know, most doctors don't know what they're talking about. Let's just be honest. Um, if you're eating a, you know, a standard American diet and your blood sugar is in the 60s, something is wrong. <laughs> but if you're eating a ketogenic diet and your body is really adept at using ketones as fuel, then no. Uh, blood sugar in the 60s is fine. So uh, I like it, though, when it's in the 70s. I, you know, anything in the 70s makes me happy. I'm reasonably happy when it's in the 80s. Um, if it's in the 90s, occasionally that's fine. I can tell when I start getting out of whack, I'll see it in the 90s a lot. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're just not doing as good as you should be with the diet, man. So, you know, it's a good tool to help keep me on track to one, know, you know, am I eating as good as I really think I am, even though I'm not paying as close attention? Because, you know, you get into a habit where you think, oh, I got this. And you don't track and you don't pay really close attention and you just think you got it and things are starting to slip in and you're not doing quite as good as you should. And then the next thing you know, you're checking your blood sugar and it's in the 90s every day where it was, you know, four weeks ago, it was in the 70s every day. While 90s isn't horrible, um, it's just an indicator that you're not doing as good as you were. And I think all the credible research now that's come out in the past decade proves conclusively. If you want to live a long time, the best thing you can do is keep your insulin level as low as possible, your blood sugar level as low as possible, and your, the level of inflammation in your body as low as possible. And what causes all those things to be high? Sugar. 
what causes them all to be low not eating sugar and when I mean, when I say sugar, I also mean the carbs that are in a baked potato. Uh, you know, just because it's not listed as sugar, the carbs in a baked potato, when it hits your body, it's just like sugar. Your body converts it to, sh- to sugar, glucose. Um, when you eat biscuits, it's carbohydrates, but when your body converts it, it converts it directly into glucose. So it's just eating sugar. That's all you're doing. So... <clears throat> That would be the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say, if you've ever saw something, you're like, man, somebody says this is a good ketogenic thing to eat, but I'm not sure. Let me test it. That's when having a blood sugar meter really comes in handy. My goal and your goal should be when you eat um, a meal that your blood sugar doesn't rise over 20 points, 30 points max, but preferably in the 20 range. But this is especially true when you're just eating one item. Let's say you found somebody that's selling the perfect keto bar, you know? And you're like, yeah, I'd like to have keto bars around. So sometimes when I'm traveling and I'm hungry, I could just reach into my purse or reach in the glove box or reach in my pocket or wherever. Pull out a keto bar that's, that's nice and healthy and eat it and move on my way. So there's a lot of ways they can fudge numbers on what's in there. Some of them use really bad sugar alcohol. Some of them use sugar alcohols that are fine. Uh, some of them use uh, uh, fiber filler that's okay, and some of them use fiber filler that's horrible. It's just hard to know. It's just really hard to know. But one way you can know is to t- take your blood sugar, eat that keto bar, check your blood sugar level an hour later. If it went up over 20 points, then that thing is not keto. It's not going to help you lose weight. It's not going to help you stay healthy. And you need to let it go. And so I can't tell you how many foods I've tested um, using that method. And I don't have to take anybody's word for it. The other thing I would say is since everybody has different levels of insulin sensitivity. Like we can have 10 people that are all insulin resistant. But they'll all be different levels of insulin resistant. So... One of these quote-unquote keto bars on somebody that's just mildly insulin resistant, their blood sugar may not go up at all or only go up 10 points. And then the person at the under end, the the 10th person in the line who's the worst insulin resistant, they could eat it and their blood sugar go up 30 points. So for one of those people, it could be considered acceptable. For the other person, not acceptable. So again, blood sugar is the best way to test for this. Um, It's the cheapest, most efficient test. Um... It gives you all the answers you need. It's not expensive, and uh, you don't need anything else. To you know, I think there's a few things that that are good to test at home, and those would be your resting heart rate. It would be the difference between your resting heart rate and what your heart rate is one minute after you stand up. So in other words, you sit down, make sure you've been sitting a minute or two. Your heart's coming all the way down. Take that number, then stand up, wait 60 seconds, and see what that heart rate is, and then check the difference between them. And you want the difference between them to be as low as possible. Preferably, you would like it to be back down to where it started. Um, but, the, but the closer it gets back to where you started is, is the healthier your heart is. So that's, I love that test. That's one of the best indicators of cardiovascular health that you'll find. Uh, um, blood sugar, well, that's my second test that isn't the blood sugar test. The blood sugar test is the best. I mean, checking your blood glucose, is, to me, is the best, most informative thing you can do. Uh, So if you want to track markers of health, these are the three I love to track. That one, first of all. Secondarily, that the sitting, resting uh, heart rate. And and that's a good metric on its own. But then also add in the differential between the standing up for 60 seconds and see what the differential is. So that would be the second one that's really good. And then the third one, obviously, is blood pressure. I think checking your blood pressure every day and, um, you know, check it at the, try to check it at the same time. Check it when you've sat down for a couple of minutes, you know, um, so that it's consistent every day. And uh, just compare it and see how it goes. And I can tell you, when I first started my weight loss journey, I tracked those things a lot. And even though I saw pounds on the scale coming down, and, and I got excited about that, and I posted about it a lot. The happiest thing that I saw was these other markers coming down. My resting heart rate started getting lower. The differential between my resting heart rate and my standing up 60 seconds later heart rate started getting lower. And my blood pressures started getting lower. And then my blood sugar started getting consistently lower. I got, you know, way more. I didn't post a lot about that because people don't understand that. You know, you can't go online and go, 
Woohoo, my resting to standing heart rate differential is down eight points. And like nobody nobody would light your light you up on Facebook and go, Oh, great job, buddy. That's amazing. You know, still nobody knows or I mean not nobody, but very few people know or care about that. So you post, hey, I lost four pounds, and people are like, Woohoo, you go, man, because everybody knows what it's like to lose four pounds. But those are the main tests that I like. Um, if you're an exerciser, there's one more test you can do. And it is the differential in your heart rate um, when you've hit your max and then uh, 60 seconds later. So um, let's say you're doing sprints or you've got the, the treadmill, you've been on it, and, and at the end of it you've ramped it up and you've gone three or four or five minutes or whatever at top speed and you stop it. And you check your heart rate and you get off and you know, your heart rate is maxed out at like 180 or something. And then you want to wait 60 seconds and check it again and see how much it's come down. Uh, Set your recovery heart rate. And you want it to be greater than, I think it's greater than 20. It's been a while since I've done that because the last time I was on a working out binge, I hurt myself again, which, you know, really impeded my psychology, but also my weight loss. So um, I haven't been working out in a while, but I used to love to track that, and you'd see it come down. Like, the more you work out every day, the healthier you get, the farther that number falls. Like, when I first started testing that thing, man, my heart would still be beating almost just as fast as it was when I stopped a minute later. <laughs> um, but then I got to where it'd be 20, 25, 30, 40 points lower, and it's like you could see that your cardiovascular system is getting healthier as you go. The, you could actually see benefits. Like, you may not be able to see it on your body. Uh, even if your weight doesn't change, you're like, am I getting any healthier? Um, that is a great test to let you know that you are indeed getting healthier, and it's something you can physically measure. So I hope that all these things uh, help you if you're a person that wants to track and know how you're getting better and, and, and know data and, you know, have this information. And so you can, it's, to me, information gives you control over your health. It's numbers you can look at. You don't go to, got, got to go to a doctor for these numbers. Sadly, most doctors don't even understand these numbers or know anything about them. So it'd be pointless to take these numbers to them anyway. Take control of your own health. Put it in your own hands. You see that you're getting healthier. Know that your health markers are where they should be or that you're getting closer to them. These are the things I would check. Blood sugar being the most important. And then I would add in the others if you are interested in those things. Uh, subscribe to us on social media, Instagram, it's Fat Guy Podcast, and everything I used to post on Snapchat is now going on Instagram stories, so if you are a Snapchat follower, you need to add me on the gram. Um, Facebook, obviously, is Fat Guy Podcast, and we're also on Twitter, Fat Guy Podcast, and you can subscribe to the podcast either in the uh, Google Play Store or in um uh, Apple Podcast, just look for Fat Guy Podcast. And if you don't understand any of that, you can download a free app called Spreaker, S P R E A K E R, Spreaker. Download it, it's free. They host thousands and thousands of podcasts. Mine is just one of them, but it makes it really easy to access it. You download the free app, go to the search thing, search for Fat Guy Podcast. You'll hit the heart button and follow and subscribe, and you'll get notified about new episodes. And you'll also be able to see previous episodes. You can scroll back and see every episode I've ever done. Thank you so much for listening today. Share this on your social media. You never know whose life you can change. That's how I found keto. That's how I really started excelling in my weight loss journey. And I highly recommend it. Thanks again. Appreciate it.